And then what we need to consider is the direction of light. And this is important for determining where the reflections and the highlights are going to be. So first of all, looking at the reference photo, I can see that the light is coming from the top right-hand corner. And therefore, on the bottom left-hand corner is where we're going to have the iris, the colour part of the eye, highlighted. So we'll just take our yellow and just in the corner there, do a little bit of highlight to that green. So it becomes a sort of pale greeny yellow. And after that, of course, we need to consider the reflections. The eye isn't too close up, so all we need to do really is to put a little highlight in the top right hand corner, following the direction of the, the sunlight. So just a little gentle stroke there, following the curve of the eye, maybe just a slightly harder spot where the sun's catching it. Don't make it too strong, otherwise you'll end up looking quite cartoony with it. After we've done that, of course what we need to do then is place the pupil, tiny little spot, Again, it's not going to be too strong because the, there's a lot of light that's catching the eye. So check placement on your reference. That looks about right. And then we can go around and just sort of tidy up the outline of the eye. Because we've applied some colour over there, so we've lost a little bit of the definition. So this is just recreating the definition of the eye. So using the corner of the pastel again, just get that definition back. A little bit of darkness into the tear duct. And that should be about there for now. Give it a little stroke with the finger as the tear duct fades out into the nose. The next thing we'll look at is the nose itself. Now most cats, including big cats, have pink noses. Variations of pink. Um, you'll notice if you have a cat at home, look closely and you'll see it's kind of a soft pink colour. So what we need to do with this leopard is to take our dark uh, dusky pink almost, and just put again a base coat into the nose of this dusky pink. Then what will happen, when we place the black on top, we'll get a kind of pinky black in the shadows and a little bit of pink showing in the mid-tones. So take your black again, using the corners, just strengthen the outline, as we did with the eye, so it's nice and strong sitting on top of that upper lip and then gently, very, very softly, put a glaze of black pastel where the shadow is. So stroke it lightly. It's better to apply two or even three soft, light layers of black to shade that rather than one heavy layer. It's easier to add than to take away. And a little definition around the top of the nose. And finally, because the light is uh, quite strong here, we'll pop a little bit of white highlight on top of the nose. Again, you don't want anything too shiny because they're not like wet dog noses that have a high gloss finish. So a nice subtle highlight on the nose there. Finally, we'll just give some definition to the, to the mouth. So the upper lip ends about here and curves around and then we'll just darken that shadow between the upper lip and the chin. So we can get the mouth shape correct at this stage. And there we are, eyes, nose and mouth completed. Having got the details in the eyes, nose and the mouth, the final part of this painting, or any painting, is the most important part. That gives us contrast. So what we need to do is take our black, and we'll use white in a moment, and what we're going to do is to deepen the shadows where it's needed, create some highlights, and bring the cat out of the paper. Uh, it's also a good point at this stage to reaffirm some of the spots. We've lost some of the darkness here and there by applying colour on the top. So the important areas, especially around the head, the mouth, the neck, just coming down here, we'll need to strengthen these spots again. And uh, it's also a good opportunity, if you missed any spots, now's your chance to put them back. I think looking at mine, I've missed a couple here. It's not crucial, but you notice these things as you're working around it. So I'll pop those back in. And then I'm going to concentrate on, first of all, the spots below the eyes, around the face and the head generally. Just going over where you went before, but this time make them a little bit stronger. It's the same technique, the same strokes, but this will also help to subdue the colours a little bit more. And as I said, this contrast 
stage really does start to give life to your painting. It's still advisable to keep checking back with your photograph, by the way, even though you're going over where you've been before, because you may well discover you missed a couple of important spots along the way, as I did. So always keep checking the direction of the fur growth. This is a, another good reason for keep looking back at your photograph. And these whisker lines, as I said earlier, are very, very important because they give shape to the to the muzzle and the mouth generally. So I'll come back to the ears. We've got this little black tip on the ear on the other side. So we'll concentrate instead on the ear that's nearest to us. And this time we need to work around and just give a little bit of a fur textured edge to it. So nice little strokes, short hairs around the ears, of course, not nothing too long. And then inside the ear, we have a bit of a shadow. So again, it's the opportunity to create longer hairs or the effect of longer hairs inside the ears. And then we can start to come down to the neck. The same process, just go over the spots you already have, make them a little bit stronger here and there. Try not to give every spot exactly the same value. Just vary it as much as you can. Vary the angles of your stroke as well, but this will make it look more natural. What we want to avoid is uh, a lot of parallel lines. The more you vary the angle, the more natural it looks. Again, the shadow behind the ear, we don't want it too strong, so we're just going to go over that quite softly. The same as we did with the nose. It's almost like a transparent glaze of black to get that shadow. And just gently rub your finger alongside. Remember, this is all one piece of fur. There are no separate brown bits, no separate yellow bits, no separate black bits. Everything is connected. A little bit softer on the back because they're catching a bit of light there, so the black won't appear too strong. So where the black spots catch the light, they will be a little bit subdued. So just bear this in mind too, and this will give you an extra feeling of depth to the form. You notice I'm using a lot of sort of V shapes, and the V shapes, the beginning of the Vs, is where the shadow starts. And then it splays out to form the ends of the fur. All the time I'm checking the direction, making sure I'm going in the right direction. We don't want any vertical stripes here or horizontal stripes. And then as we come round the back, we change the direction again and it starts to come down this way and even curve up a little bit on, along the back. Sometimes these spots make little patterns, you know, little squares almost, of spots that are joined together. So I'm not suggesting you join all the dots, but what I'm suggesting is that you join a few of them to make little patterns like that. Again, while we've got the black, we can just pop a few little black hairs along the back, flick them out as though the hairs are standing in front of the background. A little bit softer on this section where the light's catching it. For this, you can uh, do as much or as little as you like. You can really go to town with the black, and once you've got your colour in, anything you do will only enhance it further. So try to experiment and see how much detail that you want to put in. Maybe deepen the shadow just behind the ear. Remember, you can always add layers like this. You, you can't really take it away once you've got it on. And soften the edges of the shadow. That should be enough for our black. 